Hey everyone, welcome back to My Apple Zone, and in this video, we're going to talk about iCloud and iOS 5 and what that means to you. So let's get started. So next week at uh, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, uh, Steve Jobs is going to be taking the wraps off of iCloud and iOS 5. And I wanted to touch on iOS 5 and iCloud really quickly. And I wanted to start with iCloud. So what is iCloud? What does it mean to you guys and why is it so important? Well, quite simply, think of iCloud like this. Take your iTunes library that's currently on your computer and uh, duplicate it, clone it, whatever you want to talk, well, however you want to talk about it or, or say it, and uh, put it up in the uh, internet cloud, and that's what iCloud is. So what does that mean? Well, let's say, for example, you buy a song or uh, a video um, on iTunes, and it's on your iTunes library on your computer, and you're away from your computer, you're, you're you know, at the gym, you're running, you're, you know, hiking, whatever, and you want to listen to that, so that song on your uh, iPhone or your uh, iPad, but you forgot to sync um, the devices to iTunes, your iTunes library. Well, guess what? You're not going to have access to that song. Well, with, uh, with iCloud, you will. You'll simply be able to access all of your media that you currently have in your iTunes library uh, up in the cloud with iCloud. Now, that's, that's huge. And another big advantage of iCloud is synchronization. Uh, no longer will you have to use the cord to synchronize your uh, iOS devices anymore. You get rid of the cord and it'll all be done uh, wirelessly over the internet, i.e. 3G or Wi-Fi. So whenever you, um, whenever there's an iOS uh, update, it'll do it uh, automatically. Uh, if you have um, applications that need to be updated, it'll do that automatically for you. You'll be able to do syncing with your iTunes library um, wirelessly without the cord anymore. So that's going to be huge. So you'll have access to all your media up in the cloud. Your, again, your music, your videos, your photos, anywhere you have uh, internet, act, uh, internet connection for your iOS devices or any other computer. You'll simply be able to log into iCloud and either play your music or uh, share your photos. Uh, as long as you have an iCloud account, you'll have access to all your media. There's also a lot of speculation about um, document synchronization. Um, Right now, if you want to synchronize your documents with your iPad or your computer, you have to either use iDisk or you have to email it or you have to use a cloud storage service like uh, Dropbox or some other service. Um, what we're hoping to see next week with iCloud is seamless synchronization. So whenever you save a document on your computer, whether it's a Word document, Pages document, uh, Adobe document, whatever, whatever document that you save, you'll have the ability to automatically sync it with the cloud and have it have access to it anywhere your um, oh, hold on a second anywhere you have your iOS device. So that'll be huge. Document synchronization will be huge. We hope to see that as well. So what is um, iCloud going to cost? Well, there's a lot of speculation that if you are somebody who uses the iTunes uh, library all the time, i.e. you buy a lot of program or you buy a lot of uh, songs or uh, movies or rentals, that um, iCloud will be free for you and, and uh, otherwise there will be like a $25 uh, annual subscription fee. So the fee schedule really is up in the air. Nobody knows exactly how much the iCloud service is going to cost. Um, so it will be interesting to see um, uh, how that plays out. So let's talk about iOS 5, but real quickly, iCloud is going to have to be um, synchronized with um, iOS 5, or integrated, I should say, with iOS 5. So what does that mean? Uh, right now, if you want to access iCloud with the current iOS, you'd have to have a separate application to do that. So you're going to see complete integration with iCloud with iOS 5, OS 10 Lion. Um, so simply, you'll just go into a preference on your uh, iPad or your iPhone. You'll turn on iCloud, enter your username and password, and again, you'll have access to all your media. That'll be great. So you're going to see that integration with iOS 5 and Lion next week at Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. So you're going to see a tandem announcement, iCloud, iOS 5, OS 10 Lion, complete synchronization uh, across the operating systems and with this complete synchronization with iCloud as well. So let's talk right, let's jump right into um, iOS 5. Uh, a little over a month ago I did an iOS 5 update and I said that uh, iOS 5 would be available sometime um, 
in April, and um, I completely missed the boat on that one. But I think the features that I talked about were right on the money. Uh, you're going to see an improved notification system with iOS 5. No more of these annoying right here. It just happened. <laughs> no more of these annoying notifications that come up whenever you're uh, listening to music or in an application playing a game, trying to send an email, and then you have to either uh, cancel the notification or accept the notification. You're going to see those notifications become much more subdued. Maybe a little, maybe a little notification up in the corner or down below, letting you know that an application needs your attention. That'll be huge. Um, widgets, uh, fully customizable background similar to the Android operating system so you can uh, have your time or your weather or whatever information you want running in the background on your, on your if you want to call it your desktop or your iPhone background. Uh, that'll be nice and really for developers uh, iOS 5 is going to be a huge leap forward because they'll have a access to a huge slew of APIs, a huge, that they were completely uh, unaccessible right now. They'll have complete access to an additional set of APIs which will allow them to uh, be more creative uh, with the applications they're creating and update the applications that are currently available uh, f to uh, allow new features and functionality that uh, aren't that isn't currently available uh, with the current iOS. So there's no really limitation with the hardware; it's the operating system itself. Um, I think you're going to see uh, Apple uh, really expand uh, iOS 5, uh, allow a lot more flexibility for developers, a lot more creativity and functionality for users. Um, because Apple really has fallen behind the Android operating system and iOS 5 is going to have to be a huge leap forward. So I think you're going to see uh, all of those features plus more. Don't know what those are, so we'll have to see next week. And real quickly, let's touch on Lion. Again, you've all, you've all seen the preview of Lion. Uh, you're going to have, uh, you're going to be able to organize your applications similar to uh, how you can organize your applications on the iPad. Uh, complete 64-bit um, uh, operating system. Uh, all of the operating system will have access to all of your RAM, so the no more of the four gigabyte RAM limit. Uh, the uh, line will be much faster. Uh, I think it's going to be a huge improvement. Again, seamless integration with iOS 5 and iCloud. So next week is going to be huge. Uh, again, iCloud, iOS 5. OS 10 Lion and I will be covering all of that next week and uh, giving you the lowdown on all three of those and uh, I can imagine that there's going to be uh, just one more thing uh, that Steve Jobs will probably announce next week. Uh, so it'll be good to see Steve doing the keynote. It'll be good to see him back up on stage. I'm glad to hear that he's going to be doing the keynote. So uh, if you guys have any questions about this video about iOS 5, iCloud, OS 10 Lion, leave a comment down below. And as always, please support the channel by giving a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. And uh, next time, I'll be talking about World, the Worldwide Developers Conference and uh, all the huge announcements that are going to take place next week. So stop by for that. Until next time, I will talk to you guys later.